What water? It's best not to disturb her. What do they don't want us to know about? For a show that's set entirely underground, Silo has had a lot of references to water. At the end of episode two, Juliet was terrified by the large body of water under the silo that George was convinced held an important secret. At the end of episode three, Jules nearly drowned when she used water to keep the temperature down long enough to finish the repairs on the generator. And episode six ended with her being blown away by a photo of the ocean. That picture turns out to be connected to Gloria, a character we haven't seen or heard from since she asked Allison if she really thought she was the kind of person they want to have children. It turns out we haven't seen her because she's been sent to medical for long-term care that appears to consist of her being zonked on sedatives for the rest of her life. When she misses a dose, she starts talking about the water that they don't want us to know about, and when Jules goes to see her, she delivers the episode's biggest reveal when she says that after the rebellion, they put something in the water so that memories will fade. Is this something that's really happening? She just kind of says it and it slips by with everything else that's going on. But that idea of a they or a them, someone behind the scenes pulling the strings, is something that is all over this episode. When this comes from someone like Gloria or Regina, you maybe question the source. It sounds a little conspiratorial. But when Judge Meadows, who's supposed to be one of the most powerful people in the silo, says it, you kind of have to pay attention. As viewers, we know a little bit more than Jules. For instance, we know that when she sees that her vase in her apartment is missing, that someone removed it so they could see what she was doing in there. We know that there are people in a room full of screens keeping tabs on the citizens through cameras that are hidden behind their mirrors. And after episode 7, we know that that room is behind the janitor's closet door, and that Sims was probably the person they were talking about waking up at the end of the last episode. Episode 7 picks up right where that left off. Jules finds Gloria's name in the Georgia Travel Guide. She remembers seeing her name from an interview Holston left in the folder that he hid in the vent. And she goes to her office to look into her. Seeing the book has changed things for the sheriff, and she's on a mission to learn more about it. She blows off a meeting with the mayor, she leaves Billings in charge, and when she finds out Gloria is essentially in a haze from her mandated medical treatment, she goes to confront Judge Meadows, who she learns is out of the office with a cold. In the process of all of this, she turns off her radio and she misses a call to respond to a fight. So when she gets back to the office, Billings gives her an ultimatum to come clean. And surprisingly, she just tells him what's going on. She tells him that George was murdered, as was Johns, Marnes, and Trumbull, and she's asking him to look the other way, which sets up his chance to be surprising when he gives her a way to re-examine George's case using the pact in a way that is connected to their new relics investigation. This makes it clear that they're starting to become a team, and the only thing he asks in return at this moment is for her to promise to see the mayor. Then she sends him home, but asks where Meadows lives, and he tells her, and also tells her, if she wants to get on the judge's good side, then bring her breakfast. Before any of that plays out, she runs into Lucas in the cafeteria, and finds out that he works in IT. That leads her to asking about his boss, Bernard, and then they talk about the stars again, and that leads to him moving in for a kiss. She's receptive at first, but then pulls away and leaves, without really telling him what's going on, and then later we see her looking at a page about the stars in the book. She does go to meet Bernard, and he tells her that the judge didn't appreciate his intervention when Sims was trying to pull her up about the Pez dispenser. Now he's worried that she's trying to make a move against him, which seems a little bit out of left field based on what we've seen from the judge. But this comes down to Jules' perspective of whether or not she can trust Bernard, because if he can be trusted, he would certainly know more about Judge Meadows and her motivations. He proposes a plan of them getting something they can use to keep her from taking over, essentially. From what we can see, Jules appears to take him at his word and mentions that she's working on something that might be useful, but she can't tell him what that is according to the pact. 
She does follow Billings' advice and takes breakfast to Meadows, who tries to send her away. When she brings up locking up citizens and drugging them against their will, she eventually lets her in. Inside her apartment, we see that she has a bunch of relics. There's an Etch-a-Sketch and a Ring Frisbee. And Jules also sees that she's mixing a drink in the morning. So this idea that she's not feeling well, that she has a cold, is all to cover up her alcoholism as far as we can tell. Jules tries to reason with her. She makes her an offer that if she lifts the medical order she has to keep Gloria drugged so that she can ask her about what she said to Allison, then she'll quit being sheriff by the end of the week. Meadows contends that she can't do this, and she adds that they will never let you find out the truth. She doesn't say anything more, but it's clear that she's afraid of whoever they are, and there's no way that she can be convinced to help. You see that Sims is eavesdropping on this conversation, and he finds out that Jules visited Gloria. This is interesting for a couple of reasons. One, it doesn't seem like anybody is above being watched by the cameras. I suppose you could make the argument that Judge Meadows is compromised, but at the same time, it doesn't seem like there's anyone to stop Sims, and I think we should also think about the fact that he probably answers to someone else, which is interesting because that means that anyone who isn't directly involved in whatever's going on behind that janitor's closet door has to be afraid of the people who are back there. Jules goes to her father's place because he's a doctor, and she thinks he might be able to help her get Gloria out for a couple of hours. She sees her brother's stuffed animal on the bookshelf, which signals that he has regrets about the past. And as the episode progresses, we see that his story is more complicated than we initially thought. At first, he tries to talk Jules out of going after Gloria, but because of their past, she's able to shame him into helping her. They work out a plan that has him sneaking into the ward, saying that he needs to get into the medicine cabinet. He just needs some aspirin. Then he goes into Gloria's room, where he sees which sedative she's on. He brings her to the nursery where Jules is waiting and tells her that she can't really ask her any questions because she's out of it. Jules insists that they are doing this to her and she needs to find out why. And even though it's a bad idea, her father agrees to give her a different drug to reverse the effects of the sedative. This leads to a seizure, which reminds Jules of her brother, and sets up a situation where they have to wait. While they're doing that, we see Sims enter the janitor's closet, and we see how the room with the monitors is hidden. We find out that there are blind spots in the camera coverage, so they can't see where they're at right now. This is curious because it seems to indicate that they can't make new cameras when the old ones break. Because of that, they've been repurposing cameras from medical for years. And while we can see that there's still a lot of cameras in the silo, that there are screens filled with people doing things everywhere, there are some places they can't see. While they wait for Gloria to wake up, Jules and her father have a conversation. We see that she's still very cold with him, and that she hasn't gotten over what happened when she was a kid. When he goes out to get a cup of coffee, Gloria does wake up, and Jules asks her about Allison, though she's still out of it and she can't really remember details very well. When her father comes back, Gloria recognizes him and says that he works for them accusing him of stopping her from having a baby. Gloria is freaked out by his presence and doesn't seem to trust Jules either until she shows her the book. This is something she recognizes right away, and we find out that she gave it to George's mom. She describes her as one of us, one of the Flame Keepers, a group of people who wanted to keep the memory of the world before the silo alive. And that was something that the powers that be were opposed to. Apparently, so opposed that since the rebellion 140 years ago, they've been trying to erase the past in anyone who tried to preserve it. This is where she brings up the idea of drugging the water, which doesn't seem to work on everyone based on the fact that she's in medical loaded to the gills on sedatives. And that's why they didn't remove her birth control device or Allison's. There are certain traits in certain people that they want to die off. Jules finds out when she asks her dad that he didn't remove the birth control because he was told it was for long-term survival. It was an effort to prevent genetic diseases from running rampant, which would probably make sense to a doctor. But he says that he always wondered if they wanted to punish the ones they picked, but he was too afraid to ask any questions. 
This all seems really important. George's mom was the last flame keeper Gloria knew, so she gave her her most treasured relic. But then she died not long after that. This recontextualizes George's obsession with relics and what he was trying to do. And this probably isn't lost on Jules. We also find out that his mom knew her mom, and that Gloria thinks that she was helping her with some type of magnifying device. And that Gloria was always surprised that they let a woman like Hannah Nichols have children. She wasn't an official flame keeper, but she says that she shared the same curiosity. This stands out because there's a moment when Jules and her father are talking where I think she implies that he betrayed her mother, but I don't think we know how yet, because what Gloria says makes me wonder if he might have ignored his orders to leave her birth control in, since we know they had two children together. It all hints that there still are some things we don't know about what happened before she ran away to Mechanical. The episode ends as she takes Gloria back and lets her see the book one more time. As they're talking, she mentions that Holston visited and brought flowers, and Juliet finally puts it together that they can watch them through the mirrors. She decides to cover the one in that room, and then checks the vent, because Gloria said that Holston was working on it, and she finds the hard drive. Sims wants to know what's happening, and when his crew says that the problem is that they only have audio, he points out that the real problem is that she knows that they have cameras, and he tells them to send in the Raiders. This is a SWAT-like group that is ready and waiting, and they take off to head to Gloria's room. There, she tells Jules that she's the last flame keeper now. She says that she didn't ask for this, it's not fair, but it is down to her, and if she lets it die, the truth will die too. It's all a bit much and Jules is somewhat reluctant, but she asks her what her mom would want her to do. And then she asks her, do you know why she killed herself? And we don't get to see what happens next. The Raiders bust in, they ask where she is. We see that she already left, that she was a little bit ahead of them. And the episode ends as it cuts to black. I thought this was a really good episode, especially the second time I watched it. And it also has the distinction of being the one where having read the series is really causing me to hold back in relation to speculating on what'll happen next. As I've been saying, I think the show is doing a commendable job adapting the book. And the ripple effects from changes they made early on have now created a situation where I can't say for sure what's going to happen next. But while details have changed, it's still fundamentally the same. So it's impossible to discuss the questions I have in a way that's disconnected connected from what I know. I tried to think back to where my head was when I first read the book, and this idea of a they, of a someone who is controlling things, started to become more apparent. I think what I kept coming back to was the motivation behind it. That is to say, why is the silo set up this way? What is anyone trying to accomplish through these deceptions? How was this decided and how did it come down? Because what we see is that there's this guy, Sims, who has a lot of power. And from what he told Trumbull, this was apparently passed down from his father. But surely this isn't some independent shadow dynasty. It feels built into something larger. He plays a role in an organization or a cabal or something, right? Like, it doesn't feel like he's the undisputed ruler of the Siloverse or whatever, right? So then questions about who is in on it, who knows what he does, what are they trying to accomplish, and who answers to who? These questions all inevitably come up. The key example here is Sims using Judge Meadows as his puppet. That should make you question everything you know about the power structure, which is almost confusing at this point. Bernard appears to fear Meadows, but she's just doing what Sims says. So what does that mean about Bernard shutting Sims down when he tried to remove Jules in the last episode? Is this just regular jockeying for power? Is it just politics? When Jules first came up, it seemed like Bernard and Sims were on the same wavelength working together. And even before that, when they were trying to convince Johns to make Billings the next sheriff. Was that just an arrangement of convenience because they both are interested in maintaining order? Or is it something more? And to bring it back to the water I was talking about in the beginning of the video, there's an exchange between Jules and Bernard where he brings up water as he's talking about how important his job in IT is. 
Jules thinks it's the generator that keeps the silo running, but he points out that all the invisible functions that IT does, like transmitting messages, circulating the air, and watering the crops, are controlled by his servers. If those were to fall into the wrong hands, it wouldn't matter that the generator was cranking out power. I feel like this reframes their role somewhat, since the name IT makes them sound like the guys you call when your computer is acting up. That mention of watering the crops makes it seem like you would need access to those servers if you were planning on doing something, like putting something in the water supply to make people forget. The introduction of the Raiders was curious too. I guess those guys work for Judicial, and not the secret organization in the janitor's closet. But I mean, we've heard the citizens were on edge, and we saw actual fighting in this episode, where they didn't bring these guys out. Why haven't we seen these guys yet? The way they show up at medical gives the impression that regular citizens know they exist, but that they also only bring them out in very specific situations. Another thing is the idea that no one knows for sure about the cameras. Billings and Jules referred to the listeners and the friends of the silo, which is kind of funny since everyone is looking at everyone else as a potential snitch, but it's probably just the cameras that can see inside their apartments. Her dad, who has worked with some of these people behind the scenes, even had the sense that they couldn't listen inside the nursery, but it didn't seem like he knew for sure how it worked. And I gotta say, it was nice to see them filling in some of the blanks related to his story. As I mentioned before, I think there's still more to discover there. I mean, we did find out that her mother committed suicide. If you think back to those flashbacks, it skips over from when her brother was having the seizures to where they're both not around anymore. So there's more to understand there, which may be related to what Gloria was saying about this magnifying glass that she was working on. But at the very least, there's more that we don't understand about what Jules blames her father for, and if there's things that she doesn't know about what really happened. And to wrap it up, it's pretty hard to figure out how discovering these things that Jules did in this episode, like the cameras, and that Judge Meadows is just an alcoholic who is having problems keeping things together, and she really answers the Sims, it's pretty hard to see how she can turn this around and not end up like John's and Marn's. If there really is an effort to eliminate people who remember things, I don't see how you can go forward with a sheriff who has seen this book, who knows that there's something going on behind the scenes. So it'll be interesting to see how Sims reacts to this in the next episode. And I think that is a pretty great place to leave things. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.